Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Evan. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript covers the opening of a new gender-neutral bathroom at Northampton High. Explores the college application process for student athletes. And plays with dogs. In recent weeks, Roy Moore, the Republican candidate for the Alabama special Senate election, has faced allegations of sexual assault. On November 9th, the Washington Post published a story in which an Alabama woman accused Moore of initiating a sexual encounter with her when she was 14 years old and Moore was in his 30s. Three other women have come forward alleging that Moore pursued them romantically during their teenage years and one accused of him of sexually assaulting her when she was 16. During this time, Moore was an assistant district attorney in Alabama. Republican leadership, including Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, have called for Moore to step out of the race in light of these allegations, but Moore has refused to do so. The election is set to be held on December 12th. Seven million people are currently on the brink of famine in Yemen. Seventeen million are currently severely lacking consistent access to food. Yemen is currently experiencing the world's worst cholera outbreak, with a million cases expected by the end of the year. Additionally, Yemen has been involved in a proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia since 2015, in which more than 10,000 have been killed and 3 million displaced. Last week, Saudi Arabia tightened its blockade on Yemen, stopping the flow of aid to the war-torn country. Humanitarian aid from the Red Cross and United Nations has been blocked. On Wednesday, Zimbabwe's military leaders seized control of the nation's capital and placed the leader of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, under house arrest. On Wednesday morning, military leaders denied a military coup in a televised statement, but Mugabe has not been seen in public and the military is currently in control of state TV and the airports. The situation may have been motivated by the ongoing question of Mugabe's successor in recent weeks. Mugabe has been in power for 40 years and indicated they may be appointing his wife as his successor. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo. This is Tell It Like It Is, where this week we are discussing gender-neutral bathrooms around school. Gender-neutral bathrooms create a welcoming environment for LGBTQ students. Around NHS, there has been new accommodations regarding this issue. In guidance, two neutral bathrooms were accommodated, and recently, a faculty bathroom on the third floor was turned into a gender-neutral bathroom. I sat down with Sylvia Shred, GSA leader, to discuss a bill passed by GSA, Feminist Collective Club, and a student union to make more bathrooms gender-neutral. I have been part of the Gender Sexuality Alliance Club um, and what I've been seeing is while Northampton is really progressive when it comes to being gay or lesbian in some sense, there are, we sometimes fall back on student, or we aren't always as progressive with students that are trans or students who are gender neutral. I was elected as a student union representative for junior year. I wrote a proposal for uh, gender neutral bathrooms on the third floor. I wanted them in like the third floor bathrooms, both the men's and the women's, uh, would be turned into gender neutral. The union talked and voted on whether or not they would back this proposal, and we decided to vote that yes, we would try to continue working on this proposal, and we met with um, Mr. Lombardi and Ms. Malvezzi. GSA has been part of this decision since last year and Sara Grimaldi, a sophomore and GSA member, sat down with me to discuss how students, teachers, and administration has responded to GSA tackling this issue. The motivation for addressing this issue was that there are gender nonconforming, gender neutral, and all that stuff kids in our school, and we want them to be able to feel comfortable on more than one floor. The school and administration have responded great. Most of the students don't know that it exists, so that's probably a good response. We hope that the outcome is that there's less judgment on who decides to use those bathrooms and that overall it is a safer place for non-binary students. However, the bill was declined due to concerns both in administration and families because of possible exposure between students due to urinals. I sat down with Associate Principal Celeste Malbesi to discuss possible positive and negative outcomes into turning more bathrooms gender neutral around school. For me, um, uh, I have to consider, you know, my, part of my job is sort of the safety of students and not from the perspective of, um, you know, worried about perpetrators and, you know, I, that's, that's, that's not where I'm coming from. But I have, um, in the school, we have students who are 
of age, of consent, and students who are not. And um, you know, and I understand that that things happen in in single sex restrooms, um, but I think I just have to be I have to be cautious about sort of setting up something that uh, that maybe a parent or guardian wouldn't welcome in their own home, <laughs> you know, but allowing something like that at school. So, I, you know, I have to think about things like that. What's my role in that, in the safety from that point of view? GSA and the Student Union will continue working on improvements around the school community to make everyone's school experience welcoming. I'm Fleur Castillo. I'll see you next week on Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? The college application process for athletes in high school has been known to be very different compared to non-student athletes. Ms. Dupre, the athletic director of our Divine School, as well as Ms. Giordano, one of our school's guidance counselors, both know a lot on the subject of the college recruitment journey. So I asked them a few questions on the topic. So I think that um, you know, the application process is the same, right? Students are submitting the same documentation that they do for um, if you're an athlete or a non-athlete. What students may not know is that, um, you know, we have to actually work with the NCAA Eligibility Center. And what that means is that all our coursework has to be uploaded and approved by them in order for our students to become what they call certified. The reality is if you're going to be a D1 athlete, the likelihood is that people are already looking at you in certain sports as early as 7th or 8th grade. Smaller Division I programs are going to start looking at folks um, by sophomore year, n no question. So um, they'll be reaching out during designated um, sort of legal times to be able to reach out and let you know that they're interested. Me being a student athlete, many people expect me to have perfect grades and excel in various sports. Not to flex, but I did get called up to JV baseball my sophomore year. Real athletes, such as Nick Peterson, have made arrangements to go to college for athletic endeavors. This week, I talked to him about the process he has gone through to run in college. So the year you started running, freshman year, did you have any idea you'd be going to college for running? I had no idea. Um, I think, like, back then I was just focused on, like, just running a fast time. And back then I wasn't really... As a freshman, you know, you don't think too much about college. How did your process for applying to college different from your non-student athlete friends? I'd known a lot earlier what college I was going to go to. Um, like I knew in like July that I wanted to commit to a college. In some cases, the process begins in the early stages of high school. I also sat down with sophomore Caroline Tanner on what she has been doing for her future career in soccer. What have you started doing to prepare for college? My club team has been going to a few college showcases, and for every showcase, you can go on the website and find a list of the coaches that are attending. So my coach really encourages all of us to send out emails to schools that we're interested to so the coaches can come watch our games and see us play. This spring and summer, I'll probably start going to some ID camps and getting to know the coaches and start talking to them a little bit more and get more serious as to where I'm going to go in the future. Congratulations goes out to the boys and girls cross country teams for both finessing advances to the state finals. Best of luck to both of you. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Almost Thanksgiving. Yeah. What are you thankful for? Dogs. Yeah. Definitely dogs. Welcome to the other stuff. Human beings are the most developed creature on the entire planet, but they are far from the best. Also, if you're a cat person, you should stop watching this right now. Researchers at Psychology Today found that owners of dogs are more likely to experience a high frequency of positive emotions than owners of any other pets. Dogs seem to have an overwhelmingly positive impact on the lives of their owners. Many people elaborated on how their lives would just not be the same without them. I definitely think my dog has improved my life. Um, 
there's only been like a three year stretch in my life when I haven't had a dog and I feel like those three years were probably the worst time of my life. Um, I would say yes, she has improved my life and my family's lives um, because she's just very fun to be around. Definitely can't have the same bond with other animals as you do your dogs because no one's as fun. She's such a people person and she loves everyone so she loves to give kisses and she loves to play with her ball and so whenever somebody comes over she gets super super excited and so she'll just she'll just play for hours and she loves it. I do think he's uh, improved my life because uh, for example if you know a rough game for a sporting event or a rough day at school coming home to I mean just your parents or coming home to your uh, Unsurprisingly, not a single person would even consider giving up their dog. To get some more insight from some people with a little more experience, we went to Dakin Animal Shelter in Springfield. Um, because I purposely bring more dogs into the world, I feel like I need to come here and help those that don't have homes. Dogs are uh, very empathetic. You know, they really they, they, they kind of clue in on how you feel and what you're doing. <laughs> which, which, who are entirely different. <laughs> this Thanksgiving, be thankful if you have a dog in your life. And if you don't, go get one. Even if you or a loved one has a life-threatening allergy. Do it! Thanks for watching. The NHS band will be holding a telethon on Thursday, November 30th at 6 p.m. in the auditorium for our performance at Carnegie Music Hall. Oh my God. It will be live streamed on YouTube and Facebook Live starting at 5.30. There'll be no episode of the transcript next week due to the Thanksgiving break.